let's break some taboos. So, have you ever heard of Cheaper by the Dozen? Four, three, two, one. Hello everyone, welcome to Independent. So this is a very special episode where my channel is really taking a change. As everyone is probably aware, um, in addition to the medical pandemic that is going on, we're also going through a racial pandemic of sorts. There's protesting going all over the world in response to the dozens of black bodies that have been put down by police. So in response to that, I really want to start making this channel, in addition to talking about sex and sexuality, of course, talking about black history and educating people on the original sin of this country. So, ah, nostalgia. This 2003 classic starring Steve Martin has really become a part of, I would say, cinema history. The movie title and its contents were seemingly based on the influential Gilbreth family. The Gilbreth family had a whopping 12 children. I guess you could say that they wanted to hunt for a bargain. Or, when you hear of the phrase, cheaper by the dozen, you probably think of these little guys. Oh yeah, I'm sure that you probably went shopping in the grocery store with mom or dad and, and you guys probably came across, you know, eggs that were sold cheaper by the dozen. You know, a dozen eggs, you got a nice little, you know. Well, you know, you, you get what I'm trying to say, right? Oh, well, let's see. However, in this video, we will not be talking about either of those versions of cheaper by the dozen. To learn about the truth, of the origin of this phrase, we have to travel back in time, back to the 17th, 18th century America, to truly begin to understand the horrific reality of the meaning of cheaper by the dozen. We must go back to the auction blocks of the enslaved. According to New Orleans folklorist and educator, Dr. Mona Lisa Salori, the dozens has its origins in the slave trade of New Orleans, where deformed slaves, generally slaves punished with dismemberment for disobedience, were grouped in lots of a cheap dozen for sale to slave owners. For a black to be sold as part of the dozens was the lowest blow possible. Comic legend Paul Mooney even touched upon the origins of this phrase in one of his stand-ups, shocking the audience, of course, in typical Paul Mooney fashion. When little black boys got old enough to climax, they would put a brown paper bag over their head and make them screw their mothers. And the babies would come out illy formed and they would sell them by the dozen. And that's why we say that. Yeah, that's where it comes from. Nothing by us by accident. That's why we say that. Yeah. Uh -huh. The fact of the matter is that the hidden history of slave breeding, this industry within the United States would account for the, the vast majority of slaves that would remain in US soil. America, once established by the 400,000 to 500,000 plus slaves that landed in America, and of course, those who actually made it on the voyage, because it was actually millions more, America had developed its own system of breeding and raising human cattle. Just let that sink in for a second. And remember the 400,000 plus slaves that landed in America? Well, according to Ned and Constance Sublet, the authors of The American Slave Coast, A History of the Slave Breeding Industry, by 1860, the number had risen to about 4 million enslaved black people within the United States. Yes, people, America was not just breeding tobacco and cotton, etc but human beings too. According to the sublets, Virginia and Maryland, well, mostly Virginia, were the main domestic suppliers of slave workers. Places like Virginia and Maryland, also known as the Upper South, had this advantage because they made their slaves take part in less labor-intensive initiatives. 
which then made the slave populations live longer. And this small advantage would allow them to then take part in a new piece of legislation that is coming up. Thanks to old Thomas Jefferson. In 1808, he helped sign into law the prohibition, no, well, the ban, no, the sort of stopping of the African transatlantic slave trade. I mean, that's, that's great news, right? I mean, that's like amazing. Yes! Well, no, that's, that's really not that great. And, and I'll explain why. Old Tommy boy was clever. Well, and also a racist and also a rapist, but that's for another video. This new 1808 prohibition was actually another clever ruse to create a further monopoly for the domestic slave traders. Remember the slave traders that I was talking before in the Upper South? This meant that domestic slaves were in high demand, especially to the South. By 1860, the American slave industry had reached a whopping $4 billion. Uh, black people were worth more to white people than money itself. Ew. <laughs> white people. Okay, now that you've got a little disgusting historical background, let's get back to Cheaper by the Dozen. No, not that one. Right, so the slave breeders in the Upper South in Virginia were overjoyed with this new piece of legislation, this new loophole. So they quickly got to work and they needed to produce more workers and fast. And there were many ways that these enslavers produced more slave labor. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna talk about two. Well, one and a half. As I alluded to earlier, slaves that were born with any particular type of deformity, whether that was a deformity from an accident or from the enslaver or someone or people that had even mental disabilities or delays, were all sold at a cheaper price by the dozen. You get it? They all sold them in, in a dozen for a cheaper price because according to them, they were worth less than healthy slaves. In many cases, the enslavers did not even care who they paired slaves together with to have children with. It could be their friend, it could be their cousin, and in some cases, even their own mother. The ultimate goal, the, the end result, was to produce as much slave labor as possible to sell to use. And if the offspring was born with any particular type of deformity, which was probably the case, because if you were mating sons with their mothers, that probably was going to happen. They were thrown into the dozen bunch and sold at a cheaper price to an enslaver that was on a budget. According to psychiatrist, Dr. Patricia Newton for Hidden Colors, the use of the word mother is destructive. And here's why. We had breeding farms in the United States that, that, that would put one person from one plantation against another. We even had a system where if you were a breeder, male on one plantation, or a female on another plantation, or even on the same plantation, even if you were mother and son, they would mate you. And so I, I tell a lot of my patients and a lot of my friends, you gotta stop using the MF word because that was a description of what actually happened when the paper bag would go over the head to put one breeder against another when they were related. Remember? 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 Motherfucker. That motherfucker. West side. Fast forward to our emancipation, emancipation, from slavery and the dozens has really taken on a new meaning. A reclamation of sorts from the young black community. Ah, uh, leave it up to our people to turn lemons into lemonade once again. The dozens was the father of modern day battle rap and dare I even say hip hop. The infamous yo mama jokes have become a staple in black culture. It was a game of wit, of savvy, but also of self-control and composure. It really was not just a recreational tool, 
it was also a means to not lash out. Because if you can imagine being a slave every single day, having someone who you absolutely hate telling you what to do and you have to listen to them because the odds are against you. You really have to learn to compose yourself in a means not even really understood by most modern people today. Modern black people today. You mother Tonight I'm interested in your mother. That bitch with the big ass head. Head so big every time she tie her shoes, she flip the fuck over. Ooh, jumping right in on the mother joke. They ain't even book my niggas rules. I told them Bria's mama giving head. The dozens became a way for not only black slaves, but also their descendants to be able to thrive and live in this world that was always against them. This mentality of self-control, of self-preservance trickled down within rap and hip hop culture, bringing on a new culture in its own, a new culture that did not really want to talk that much about internal feelings because if you talk about that, then you're seen as weak. In addition, the dissing towards someone's mother could be one of the, the lowest digs, so to speak, to a person. Because the mother, think about it, is a sacred and, and has always been a sacred figure, which was distorted during slavery. Also, if you were considered as part of the dozens, think about it, being a slave was already such a degrading thing. But if you were put into the dozens bunch, that was a degrading form of an already degrading life. So this took on a whole new cultural meaning for black Americans and still does today. In conclusion, I really hope that this video wasn't too much. It, honestly, researching it was, it, it just took my breath away how deplorable slavery was and how deplorable the, the Southern romantic mentality of slavery that has continued on today is. And we need to get rid of that because slavery was not a walk in the park. And when slavery ended, the problems for black people did not end. Please do not forget to like, please don't forget to subscribe, share this. Also 13th um, is free on YouTube. Um, so if you haven't seen it, please see that. That is a very good starting ground if you are very new to all of these new concepts that are being brought out during this time of protest. So don't forget to be aware. That's also being an American, being present. All right. I don't want to give any hate to the movie Cheaper by the Dozen, Steve Martin, love you man. That movie will always be a part of my life. And also of course, no hate to any of the rappers that I mentioned or alluded to in this video. Of course, rap is an art form just like the blues. It is it is born out of, out of pain and out of triumph. So um, I really hope that you guys learned something from this. I, I definitely did. Hopefully you won't use the term mother effer anymore. Maybe you might be more conscious about it. And hopefully if you are a non-black viewer, hopefully this inspires you to do more research and to not just listen to the surface view of what you may have learned or what you may have heard from your grandmother or your auntie or whatever. Because black people have been struggling since the inception of slavery and beyond. And it's not gonna stop unless we educate ourselves. So don't forget to be independently you and I will see you on the flip side. Talk about your body, be independent.